Yes, uh, sir. You've talked a lot about the uh, quantity of water. What about the quality of water? Have, what, what have you found regarding the quality of water we have in the county? So I didn't come prepared to talk about that subject. I'm glad you noticed because it's something I excluded. Oh. We have so much data, but it's been very difficult to put it all in one spot and render it in a way that's easy to see. Hmm. The problem with chemistry is that it's, it's constantly varying. It is difficult to attribute why it's present. The uh, variables across analytical methods are very large, and you can't just draw an easy conclusion. It's not as simple as connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. So I'm loath to throw it out there and make an interpretation about chemistry without a lot of solid analysis behind it. Uh, it's a secondary talk, or a different talk, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. After all of this, can you tell us, do we have enough water in Thurston County? I uh, am actually prohibited from speaking about policy. And the answer to the question is a policy question. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's a policy question. I, I know that sounds like a lawyer's answer, and I wish I didn't have to give it. We'll have to find the retired co-worker. I'm sorry? We'll have to find your retired co-worker. About me? No, no, about answering policy questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but is retired. Yeah, yes. Oh. So I'm, oh, oh, I'm sorry to put you off on that question, but I have to. Um, as somebody who works for the state, um, the Chutes River downstream definitely has water quality and summer low flow problems that um, do need to be rectified. And the TMDL that's in place um, is, is, is to do that, you know, having to deal with the, you know, the development from Olympia and Tumwater has definitely affected the, the Chutes River. And uh, for that reason, um, there are that's that's where the major problems are. I didn't notice on your maps or your data, but is your data inclusive of the city of Olympia and Lacey, let's say, or is it excluding that boundary? Uh, in terms of in, well, well, in terms it, of all the variables that you were measuring, it, it generally overlaps all parts of the county, so it. Uh, it excludes only a thin sliver of um, the lower Chehalis that laps on the eastern, I'm sorry, western edge of the county. So in general, yes, although I want to be quite cautious because, for example, I'm using the annualized data. I've only got snapshot information. There's, this is an enormous data set. And so we're just barely climbing into the realm of seeing the landscape of these data. And I think it's premature to draw any significant conclusions particularly because water overlaps everyone. So the idea that there should be a collaborative process is uh, <coughs> very important. The ecology is going to be spearheading a new process with this new law to uh, bring together committees for each of the watersheds to look at bigger questions. And I think that's the best forum. And follow-up question to this is, do you coordinate or interact with City of Olympia utilities uh, storm and surface water, particularly and Calb and other folks? Oh gosh, yes. Every day. I do, to, a, to a great degree. Uh, that's that's actually a big part of our, my department's job, is to coordinate amongst various entities. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. Can you say, at least say, this is wonderful that your county is spending funds to collect data on all this, this is a very important resource we have. Can you say how this data when years go by, you start to make some conclusions about it, might affect policy or will it affect policy? I hope it will. I hope it will. I've presented these data several times to our commissioners, and um, they've supported the data collection effort and urged me forward through the Hearst court case when we were looking at that court case. It didn't take place in our county. It took place in, no, um, in uh, uh, Watkins County. Watkin county. But it was relevant throughout the state. So our due diligence was supported. Although, um, I think, given the new state law, this uh, ESSB 6091 that just passed, I think everybody's sort of looking at that going, did that fix what we were worried about? You know, they're asking that question, because they're, we're still trying to chew on that law. Uh, so, did that, does that answer your question? Somewhere down the road, you guys should have an effect on what people decide. Water. Yeah, I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Follow-up question real quickly. What was it you, for your first slide showed 
A and B wells, what's the difference between an A well and a B well? Oh, a group A and group B, those are two classes of water system. So a group A system is a larger system, more than 15 connections. Group B is 15 or less, inclusive of 15. Yeah. Um, I forget. Yes, sir. I have a septic system with, with my house. Yes. And I'm a mile and a half from the Deschutes River. Given that my drain field is two feet deep, maybe, how long does it take water that I I put out into my drain field to travel down to the river. Well, How fast on, does it move through the ground? Depends on many factors. Yeah. Gradient, the distance, the materials, and their hydraulic conductivity, earth, the earth properties, and the exact flow path that that water would take. Also, bear in mind that anything in the water, not just the water itself, but a solute traveling with the water, whether it might be a, a, you know, an object the size of a cell that might be a bacteria, or a um, relatively, at some point, inert substance like chloride travel at very different rates. So that the chloride might travel very quickly, the uh, sticky cell might travel quite slowly. So the answer to your question is a water molecule is not the same as a transport of a substance. So um, it's quite a complex answer and would need to be answered in a site-specific but a ballpark, I mean, is, is it moving at the rate of uh, a, a gallon? No speculation. Or no speculation at all. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I know further up the coast, some of the communities like in Whatcom County or Hecker County are having problems with salinization of their groundwater. And I was wondering with sea level rise, because I was at a meeting downtown Olympia when they were talking about projections for sea level, sea level rise. Well, I, you know, I'm interested in that question. I, I will say I've done, I did an enormous saltwater intrusion study in southern Taiwan. And I found that with a strong driving head from the highlands, as long as that head driving up against the saltwater front is high, it's very difficult for saltwater to move inland. But wells are not used Well, that's true. That's true. It is possible for wells to tip the water table down and allow it to scooch inward. So um, there's a balance. It's, it has to be evaluated in some cases. I think the city of Lacey has installed some wells at Ecology's request to evaluate that. I don't know the findings, but um, there is some interest in that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, as you go deeper, and a lot of folks along the coastline here are drilling deep, very, very deep wells. Um, those involve very long groundwater travel path lines that allow minerals to solubilize in the water so you get much more highly mineralized water as you drill deeper. So that kind of brackishness is not directly correlated with seawater. It's due to the native mineral content of the matrix. Yes. We've got a seasonal creek on campus, Woodland Creek. It yes. goes dry in the summer and then it comes back in the winter. But it seems... I mean, this is just uh, anecdotal data. It seems like it's taken longer and longer for it to come back. Are you guys monitoring like the number of seasonal creeks and then how long it takes them to actually come back? Are there increases in seasonal creeks? We have a gauge on Woodland Creek, and we monitor Woodland Creek's flow. And that's a, that's an ongoing thing for us. Um, why don't you follow up with me on that? Because that's not something I want to I want to guess about. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, Woodland Creek is in a closed basin. It's in Raya 13. It's something that is the subject of a lot of work. I mean, the number of gauges on Woodland Creek, I mean, there are a couple of dozen maybe gauge locations where we can say something hopefully more useful to your point. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. Tell me more about uh, Weyerhaeuser's uh, Vale Farm area in the upper Deschutes where since the trees have been cut, uh, when there's rain it flashes, uh, there's not um, a the ability to, uh, to retain the water. And uh, as you showed on one of your maps, the, there is a loss of water in that area. Uh, when it comes to trees, if they're young, they're absorbing water far greater rates than mature trees. So are you concerned about uh, the um, uh, harvesting, over-harvesting of the trees in the upper Deschutes? 
So this new law that just got passed specifically tries to bring in companies that are doing big tree harvest operations. I think Weyerhaeuser was one of the companies they hoped would sit on these committees. Uh, it is a question. I'd like to, I'd like to further that dialogue. Uh, many of the points you raised, I think, are worthy of consideration. Um, I don't want to go after a particular entity or practice uh, without looking more closely at it. And others have already done that. I know Ecology's done a lot of work. And they're governed by the Forest Practices Act, which is DNR regulated rather than ecology regulated. And so I have essentially zero jurisdiction over it. Um, so it is, it is worthy of further talk, I guess. And I hope that that happens as part of these new committees. Yes, yes sir. Are there any um, plans or code provisions for the future uh, either encouraging incentivizing or requiring gray water recycling? Um, number one, I don't know. Number two, I can't talk about policy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's, uh, I, I wish I could, but I can't. I, I can say a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> there are the reclaimed water study that Lot's doing, um, and you know we, we have uh, uh, now studies going on both in uh, the North County and also in uh, well, two places in North County, Bud Inlet, and uh, also with uh, Fox Prairie there. And uh, and that brings in Woodland Creek, too, where uh, the idea is, is to try to get some flow restoration through reclaimed water um, if, if the study shows that this is feasible. So um, Woodland Creek probably is going more inter intermittent, and, uh, and reclaimed water might be one way to counteract that. So, but these... Until Lot completes that study, um, you know, uh, it remains to be seen if this is going to be done. And for the record, uh, Thurston County, you know, the unincorporated areas, has expressed concern about, you know, putting reclaimed water back in because of water quality issues. So if it's going to be done, um, it, you know, you have to make sure to clean the water so that if, you know, that you're not putting you know, bad water back in. So. And all that's still being worked out. So, so uh, stay tuned. Do you have access for the public to Lots reports? Could they call you and get copies of? Is Lots issued a number of reports? Yeah, they and they have public ones. If you go to the Lot Center, they have a bunch of them on their shelf there that anybody can pick up. Super. They and did they, a study, a very interesting study yeah. of all the wells nearby. And I'm trying to remember what the Lot the website. You can find them there too. It's. Uh, it's something like a lot center org or something. I, um, if wet look, center maybe? Is it the wet center? Yeah, it's a lot, lot clean, clean water, water alliance. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, if you just Google it, you'll find it. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. You, you said two four-letter words that, that intrigued me, and they went away. Lava tube. Oh, yes. My favorite question. Please. <laughs> okay, so when I arrived here, several people said, you know, our water comes from Mount Rainier via lava tubes. I said, seriously? <laughs> Where's the data? Where are the data? So, so I, here's what I can't say. Um, I raised, actually asked the question to one of the geologists over at DNR that studies the geology of the area. And I, what I know is there are several very large anomalous springs that appear to be in areas where we don't quite know why they're there. And so when I hear that, I think either tube conveyance or fracture conveyance, you know. There are probably also some volcanics, we know there's some volcanics interbedded with sedimentary units in this area. So the idea of lava tubes is, is uh, I don't have any data to say there it is. But gosh, I want to investigate it. If I were going for a master's degree, I would be one of those subjects that's just so juicy. But I will say that lava tube theories are right up there with Mima Mound theories. <laughs> Everybody has to have one upon moving to this region. Let's thank Kevin again. more questions? Please feel free to try. I see cards up here if you'd like me.